right? Catholic, yeah. Catholic, Catholic. Catholic, Catholic. Yeah. Okay, now, Declan, have you, have you ever come across any evidence from your tradition that, look, I'm going to quote something, please forgive me, okay? I'm just quoting because I have to quote that, right? Mirza Ghulam Qadiani said that because Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam was born without father, it necessitates, it proves that he was missing the masculine qualities or the male organ. What's that, the that is totally disgusting because there is absolutely no Christian. I've never heard that before in my life. Any evidence, for, any evidence for absolutely that? Absolutely not. Absolutely and not. And can they that be... Is never, that has never ever... And is that even, never, po ever is that even possible? No. No. You know? So now this is just one example. That is a truly disgusting thing to say. And that's, and that's why, you know, I know we've been talking earlier today. Yeah. That's why it's important for people like me, yeah. for all his written works to yeah. be translated into English. Exactly. Because I want, to read, I want to read all this myself. Oh, yes, yes. And without that, you know, the Ahmadiyya community have to translate and publish all his works in English. Because if he's the promised Messiah for, for all humanity, yeah. that's for me included, and I want to read his works. Exactly. But if that's what I want to be reading, yeah. I think I'm going to be really disgusted and horrified, and so will millions of other people. Exactly. Now, the person we are talking to is not an ordinary person, okay? He is a researcher and a student to learn Ahmadiyya tradition. He's an author of a book as well. What's true, but I come from you know, a, yeah. a, a, a true, rich Catholic background. Yeah. I have a passionate belief in God. Yes. I believe passionately in yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And you know, nobody is going to disrespect Jesus yeah. like that. Yeah. Just, the way, just the same way as I would never come to a Muslim yeah. and you know, say filthy, horrible things about Muhammad. No I way. would never do that. No way, no way. I totally agree. Because I know how that would insult you and exactly. hurt you and, and, and anger you. And this, will, and this will tell people that why it's, that it's difficult to have a good dialogue with the Ahmadi clerics. Why? Because when you present this information, instead of dealing with the information, they go in denial. They say it's not there. It is there. You need to tell us why he said this. Well, where are they today? Where are they today? They that's knew the, you were coming here today. Now, where are they? That's the point. Okay, that's the point. He, they, I, I, they knew already from one week. Yeah. Now, where are they? Where are they? So, look, Dakla, one thing, one more thing. In your experience, okay, have you ever come across a Christian, for example, uh, for example, uh, the high rank, for example, any priest, bishop, bishop. any priest oh, yeah. or bishop, okay, yeah, yeah. who knew, who knew that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was the second coming of his Ibn Maryam? No. Look, I mean, they are saying that their jamaat is. I doubt it. Most of them have never heard of him. Allahu Akbar. So people have not even heard about Mirza Ghulam Qadiani and he is claiming I am the one. And how many years have and not even, even if they did hear about yeah, him, yeah. The, the minute they hear the Kashmir story. Oh my goodness. The missing 87 years. Yes, yes. Buried in India. Well, yes. What are they going to say? Oh my goodness. So basically, those who don't know, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani... <laughs> I think it's best they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mirza Ghulam Qadiani presented a story. He said that Jesus Christ he was put on the cross, everything happened to him as per the passion narrative, but the only thing is that he was taken down the cross, he was only fainted, not dead. And then he revived, he got some treatment secretly, and then he flew to Kashmir. And then he died in Kashmir at the age of 120, and his grave is there. And Declan is saying... Yeah, so, so, he, so he would have... Whether, whether you believe he died on the cross yeah. or whether you believe he yeah. survived his injuries yeah. and yeah. when travelling yeah. afterwards yeah. or whether you believe yeah. that, he, that God took him straight up to heaven, we're still led to believe that at the age of 33 his prophethood ended, oh, was completed. Good point. Completed. Because, completed. because the, the question I would have for them is, well, if he went doing this traveling, yeah. he went off to Afghanistan, yeah. Yeah. Tibet, yeah. China, yeah. he ended up in India. Yeah. For those 87 years up until the 120, yeah. what else did he do? Yeah. Yeah. And was he a prophet for those 87 years? That's the point. That's the point. Yeah.
Sorry. According to them, yes. He was preaching. It was a very empty 87 okay, years. Okay, okay, wasn't, okay, it, okay. wasn't it a okay, very okay. empty 87 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 the point is that... Clearly. Why would God have left one of his holy prophets yeah. for that length of time in this doing very, nothing. Very, doing strange, doing nothing. very strange way? And basically the point is this, the point is this. If there was any such a thing that Jesus traveling to Kashmir, I would say that we have the Christian authors, researchers, I've spoken to historians. You know, they, many they, historians. They shake their heads. Nobody there believes no, in that. There isn't a shred of evidence. So basically, can we say that, Clint? Now, there is. Some might say that because if you look at the New Testament, between yeah. the ages of 18 and 32, there yeah. isn't that much about Jesus, yes. the life of Jesus. Yes. So there is a possibility that he could have gone places. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But certainly not after being a prophet. Not after the crucifixion. Yes, yes. Not after that day. Not after that day. Okay. Yeah. So Declan, one more thing. Have you ever come across this discussion with the Ahmadis or Qadianis or the Lahoris that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani has used very foul language against Isa alayhi salam? And against Maryam alayhi salam. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. They've never told me that. They never told you this. No, no, okay. Absolutely okay. Not, no, no. So after you coming to know now that he did use this language, so now the question is, if it is there, if it is there, what's your take on that? Why, why he was using? What do you think? Why he would have said that? Well, he obviously really disliked Christians. He had some vendetta against Christians. Yeah. But. As you've explained to me, or as I've seen in, in some of the other podcasts, yeah. I suppose he had to almost get Jesus out of the way yeah. to, to step forward yeah. into his yes. his own role. Oh, yes. Because if he didn't do that, well, yeah. how would you no how would he explain to yeah. people yeah. the second coming of Jesus? Oh, yes, not yet, not yet. Okay. So, so, so in, in your in, in is there any? Okay, that's a question. Is there any possibility, Declan, that one day? You may believe that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was the second coming of Jesus. I very much doubt it. Do you? Yes. So there's no, there's no chance, right? I, from the from the evidence that that I've been gathering and from from all the podcasts and obviously from very intellectual men like you, who really, really has analysed this and has really studied this. You know, people have to listen to somebody like yeah, you. Yeah, and, yeah. and obviously there are a few others as well. Yeah, other, yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, yeah. You've never heard. I mean, this is what I want to I want to read. That's why I'm yeah. desperate yeah. for these works to be yes. translated. Yes. I mean, what other prophets? Jesus yeah. never used language like that. Yes. Moses, Abraham, you know, Jonas. There's so many prophets. But ha have you ever... Nobody has ever... In the history yeah. you know, of religion, said yeah. that prophets use this language. But it's the, all about love, compassion, yeah, yeah. forgiveness. It's so, really lovely words. So, Declan, I, can I assume that you know your scripture? Oh, so, no, I'm not a theologian. Oh my goodness! At no, least no, your don't. Bible. Well, I know a little bit of it. Okay. A little bit. Have you ever come across? No. <laughs> have you Have you ever come across in the Bible? Jesus using a foul language? No, absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Now let me tell you, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani says that Jesus used to use foul language in the Bible. It's totally true. So you, you don't believe it's the case? Absolutely not. As a Christian all my life, no. that has never, ever, ever, ever been raised. Yes. Never. 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 <laughs> now, the, now, the, now the problem here is, it means that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, when he was saying that in the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus was using a foul language. Can we say he was lying? Well, he must have been. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the one who is a liar. Oh, he's grossly mistaken. Okay. So one or the other. If we want to go with the first option, okay, <laughs> if he was lying, yeah. can he be the Messiah? We can't. Messiahs cannot lie. Case closed. Okay. Now. Just what a say. Muslim cannot lie. I mean, isn't oh, Islam yes. about the truth? Yes, yes. That's true. That's very true. And by the way, uh, Jacqueline, for example, uh, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani says, again, I know that it's going to hurt your feeling. Please forgive oh, me for that. Say it, say that. Okay? Mirza Ghulam Qadiani says, he says, he said that Jesus was having inappropriate relationships with the prostitutes. And it is in the Bible. 
Well, it's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. We, we know that he, he, he might have been friendly with Mary Magdalene, but he was friendly with lots of people. Yeah. And he never discriminated, never discriminated against anyone. Leopards, prostitutes, the poor. I mean, you know, Jesus was, you know, he, he, he was for the underdog. Yes, yes. Any, you know, yes. He, 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 spoke to, he spoke to anyone and everyone. So now the question... He was a little, in the sense like that, yeah, he was yeah. like the Prophet Muhammad. The yeah. Prophet Muhammad was, you know, a very humble, grounded man. Yeah. He'd speak to anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now the question is, for example, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani says that all the alcoholism in the Western world is because of Jesus. He blames it on that. Yes. And he says, according to New Testament, Jesus was a drunkard. How do you feel about knowing all of that? It's silly, isn't it? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So now, the, the reason I am bringing all it's of just, that... I mean, that is just so ridiculous that it's, it's not really an insult because it's so silly. You know silly, what I mean? Silly. You just dismiss it. Dismiss it. Now, the reason I mention all How of about that... about the ma masculine traits? That's insulting. Insult no, that, that would be... Insulting, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the, the reason I mention all of that, whenever we talk to them, we tell them, let's talk about Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, that what kind of a person he was as a human being. In order for him to be a messiah or a prophet or anything, the minimum requirement is a decent man, right? If somebody is lying, somebody has a foul language, do we agree he's not a decent man? No. Okay. Now, this is the reason that we tell to the Ahmadi clerics that we can discuss all the rest of theology. The first topic that needs to be the addressed topic is, is the character. character. Of Was he a decent man? And that's what you need to do. You need to do a full podcast yeah. with them yeah. on his character. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, because, and his life. Yeah, yeah. Beca because you said about the podcast, okay? Obviously, we are trying and they have denied to engage with us, right? For the reasons we know. Okay, now would you say on camera, Declan, that if they are willing to engage with us, can you be, for example, a facilitator or a moderator? I will help you in any way I can. Do you have any biases? Both sides, both yeah. sides. Yeah. Do you have any biases against e either one of us? Biases? I, I, are you biased? Bias? Yes. I, if I'm honest, if I'm honest, if you asked me that question six months ago, yeah. I was probably more neutral. Okay. Or maybe six months to a year ago. Yeah. But I, I suppose I've been listening to all the podcasts, and you know, even though I don't always understand the theological debates, you know, yeah. some some aspects of the, 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 the theological debates. Yeah. You know, <coughs> I, I suppose I sense the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore, I would say that over the last period of time, I yeah. probably have edged away from the Ahmadis. Ahmad, Ahmad, yeah. Ahmad okay. And that's, that's an honest... I, 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 I can't say, oh, no, I'm still in the middle, I'm still neutral. Okay. I, I'm afraid I'm not. Okay, okay. I, I appreciate your honesty. So now it means... However, <laughs> however, as a moderator, I, you know, are you ever going to get a moderator who's completely 100% no. unbiased? Do you know? Impossible. <coughs> I suppose the advantage is I'm not a Muslim. Yes, yes. Funny. So therefore, therefore, you know, yeah. I can, I can I, you know, and I can, in, in the case of if you want me to moderate, yeah. I can be as impartial, you know, I, I can I can endeavor to be. My uh, Horam Bhai. And, you know. My Pani. Yeah, no, no, it's all, I'm all right. Yeah, no, no, we need more. So basically, uh, the, the, the reason... Jazakallah khair, Thank you so much. So one thing, I really want to mention this thing. You said that six months ago, you had a most like, like a neutral position. And now you are more inclined that the Sunni position is more evident, right? Yeah, I think it was probably around April last year yeah. when I when I was finishing off the Lahori book yeah. that I went to some Sunni Muslims yeah. and they really opened up to me yeah. about the Ahmadiyya community yeah. and the yeah. things that, that that's you know that, that, yeah. that, that that's in his works. Yeah. More so than, than when I was doing my first book. When I was doing my first book yeah. seven, eight years ago, yeah. um, what was I being told? I suppose from Sunni Muslims, Sunni Muslims would say, well, we don't really talk to them, they're not Muslims. Yeah, yeah. 
um, you know, they don't believe yeah. in the finality of prophethood. Yeah. And by the way, believe, by the way, your coffee is ready, but we oh, can. Yeah. A bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In a second. Yeah. Um, I, and you know, <coughs> as I said, I was new to it. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, I knew that that, that Mirza yeah. Ghulam Muhammad was allegedly the the yeah. the, the promised Messiah, yeah. and it was, I understood the the caliphate yeah. around that. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, on, on an ordinary level, you know, I've met many, many very, very nice Amadeus. I oh. know some very, very nice yeah, Amadeus. Yeah, yeah. The ordinary parishioners. Ordinary people, yeah, yeah. Um, and I suppose maybe, maybe I was blinded by that. But I, I'm afraid in the last 18 months, yeah. doubts have been creeping in slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah. But I would say, yeah, maybe up until the beginning of this year, yeah. I certainly was far more neutral than I am now. Okay, got you, got you. So, Declan, one last question. Obviously, uh, you have spent time within the Lahoris, for example. I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, even eight, though, nine days. Yeah. Even though, obviously, we know that they have disagreements on certain things, okay? But as far as Mirza Ghulam Qadiani's writings are concerned, both of them take them that these are the writings of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani and they are the source of information to prove or disprove something, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you were with the Lahoris, mm -hmm. what would you say that how come that they, they did not tell you all of this information which has now made you change your position a bit? I suppose, um, they didn't really, but I suppose in fairness to them, they, they tried to get me as many English sources okay, as okay. possible, but everything is, as I said, nearly everything is in Urdu. Urdu so they struggled, they struggled to get me references in English, English. or uh, especially around his, his, his revelations. That was a struggle. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there was one particularly helpful man. Yeah, he eventually did get them for me. Okay. But th that wasn't easy, getting... Yeah sources in English. Yeah, yeah. So Declan... But they didn't, you know, they didn't tell me. They yeah. Didn't, yeah. Yeah, so Declan, it's been more than a century now, even Mirza Ghulam Kalyani passed away in yeah, 1908. 116 yeah, years, it, yeah. Right? Do you think there's any legitimate reason or excuse for the Jamaat Ahmadiyya to not translate Mirza's work in English? You know, that's a question I've never asked them, but when I meet them again, if I ever meet them again, if they ever invite me to a discussion again, that has to be at the top of the agenda. Why? With their, you know, that they have their own major publishing house. Why have, yeah, why haven't they yes, yes. published yes. these works in English? Yeah. And then once it's in English, English is the universal language of the yes, world. Yes. Well, then it can be published in other major other, languages. Other as well. Arabic, obviously. Yes. Spanish. Yes, yes. And so on. Okay. So I, if I, if you allow me just to add this on the same thing, one last final question, by the way. You, said, you, said, you said that 20 minutes ago. No, 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 no final. No, okay. I'm only teasing. I'm teasing you. Now, basically. Uh, Ask me anything you want. Yeah, so. basically, Declan, the question is. Mirza Ghulam Qadiani is claiming many things for many nations, right? Yeah. Have, you, have you ever come across any of his writings in which he is inviting to the Jews that I am your awaited Messiah, believe in me? No, absolutely not. Sir. No. So, so, so the point is, yeah. you have not come across a single statement sure in which Mirza Ghulam Qadiani is saying to the Jews I'm your Messiah, believe in me, okay? And, and that's why it's very important to get a complete chronology of his of his works, from the first yes. book to the last book, yes. and, and, and a description of what each book is. Yes. Because, yeah, w which book is that in? Okay, basically, it's in none of the books have this one. No, no. <laughs> no. But he's, he said he, he is the promised Messiah he is the, for, all, for humanity, all humanity, for all religions. He is the saviour of all humanity and he is never inviting the Jews. So he, he didn't mention the Jews at all? No. Okay. Right. No. no. Okay. So, Declan, thank you very much. Not at all. And I'm sure that this information will be helpful for many people to have your perspective as a person who is neither Ahmadi and nor from the Muslim community. Yeah. But it is finally again, it's so important that everybody is able to read these works for themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then everybody can make up their own minds. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. You know, it's Declan. great that you can tell me these things, yeah. but I yeah. want to read them myself. Yes, oh, of course, of course. Thank you, so thank, you again. thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> you know, is it okay? Okay. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I, I hope Muhammad Hassan is. I don't hear. He may be just. He should be around here. Ah, will be, will be. Because there are all these people who know everything. They are watching.
तो क्या होता है किसी की बातचीत सुन रहा हो Did he speak long? Because I went off and I looked at other things. You know the boy you were speaking to. Oh yeah, yeah. I I spoke to him. To be honest, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> and I I said I said I said look, the only reason I am talking to you out of respect, because I came to know that he was waiting for us for since two o'clock. Nice. Now that was on. Otherwise, in terms of point argument, nothing. Did he? Did he?